everyone, and welcome to Groove Builders, the show where we create together. I'm your host, Disorderly Cone, and in this episode, we're going to be building our first battleship here on the show, the USS Arizona from Metal Earth. Let's get down to the workbench and take a look at the package. All right, Groove Builders, welcome to the workbench. We have our Metal Earth US Arizona in some classic Metal Earth packaging. Look at that. Very nice. Let's go ahead and take a look at the back. On the back, we have that classic Metal Earth logo, followed by some history on the US Arizona. More on that during our build. Just below, we have some package contents, and on the right-hand side here, we have some basic instructions on how to build our model. Just like our history, we'll go into more detail about that during our build. Now, at the very bottom here, we have a QR code that we can scan to get a 360 view of a model if we need it while we're building. This can come in handy when putting different parts of detail onto our ship. All right, Groovers, let's go ahead and open up our package. We have our instructions, it's like two pages, and we have our metal. Wow, look at this stuff. Cool. This build might be a little bit more complicated than I originally thought. Groovers, let's get building. Grabbing our metal and taking our first couple of pieces out, I'm really excited to have our first ship on the channel to be the USS Arizona. Well, you know what, R2, you're right. The Moby Dick model did have the small Pequod on it, which technically was our first ship. But the USS Arizona is our first complete ship build. And I'm really excited because this particular build has a lot of parts, which is a little bit more difficult than your typical Metal Earth model that we've been building on this show. R2, are you ready with the instructions? That looks great, R2. And I see you're using the new instructions for our Groovers at home. My instructions are the older versions, but don't worry, they're exactly the same parts and the exact same instructions, just with a little less detail. The newer instructions are a lot easier to follow because of the color and also the tool recommendations that they have. The older instructions really didn't have that kind of information. Regardless though, starting at the top, we have the Metal Earth logo, followed by a nice depiction of the USS Arizona. Just below, we have a QR code that we can scan to get a 360 view of our model if we need it while we're building. With the USS Arizona having so much unique detail and shaping, I definitely recommend taking a look at the 360 view at the end to make sure your model is in pristine order. Now, just below our QR code and to the left, we have a picture of one of our parts. When looking at this picture, you'll see three different labels, showing you what our tabs, insertion holes, and fold lines look like. This is pretty important because building these metal models kind of evolves around this particular picture, so make sure you understand this picture before moving on any further. Moving on over to the right, we have the all-important legend. The first thing we have is the engraved symbol, followed by the non-engraved symbol. When we see these two things, it's very important to make sure that we're folding our metal in the proper way. We don't want to have the detail of the ship on the inside and not showing on the outside of the model. So make sure that we pay extra close attention when we have either one of these two symbols showing up. Next, we have the attention point, which you really won't see a whole lot in any of the instructions, at least the ones we've seen so far. But if we do encounter it, it's very important that we just take a little bit extra care in this particular area. And now we have our famous circles and triangles. These are literally everywhere in your instructions and they're also very important to follow closely. Now, every single time we see one of our circles, we wanna grab as much of the tab as possible inside of our tweezers and then bend it over 90 degrees. When we see our triangles, you wanna take as much of the tab as you possibly can in your tweezers and then twist them 90 degrees. This is very important for making sure that your model doesn't have any moving parts, especially if it's not supposed to. With the USS Arizona, there is a lot of small detail, so it's very important that we make sure that all the pieces that we're bending and connecting together are very tightly together. And the only way to secure them like that is making sure that you grab as much of the metal as possible on the tab before you bend them or twist them according to the instructions. At the bottom of our legend, we have an assembly tip, which says, if needed, slightly twist the tabs to hold the parts together. Then untwist and bend the tabs down for a nice finish. Now, Groovers, I definitely recommend doing this, especially if it helps you get certain pieces together. 
One thing to note though, Groovers, if you are choosing to unbend your tabs, every single time that you do this, you are weakening the metal. So it's very important to do this only a couple of times. You don't wanna accidentally break one of your tabs and not be able to finish your model. Moving right along to the right, we have our recommended tool section. The first tool they recommend is a good set of wire cutters and Groovers, I could not recommend this more, especially for metal model building. They are essential for cutting all of the parts out of the metal sheet and also getting all the little leftover pieces of metal that might get in the way of you securing your parts down. Next, we have tweezers and Groovers, I definitely recommend a good set of strong tweezers for this particular build, but having detailed tweezers will also help you get in some of those hard to reach areas, but they're not a necessity for building any of the metal model builds. Lastly, they recommend needle nose pliers, which are very useful if you accidentally misshape one of your pieces and need to flatten it out again. Of course, you can always use your table, but I find a really good set of needle nose pliers really do help you get those pieces straight again when you didn't mean to get them bent in the first place. Finally, Groove Builders, at the very bottom of our instructions, we have two pictures of our sheets of metal. Now, I personally recommend taking your two sheets and orientating them to these two pictures. And the reason for that is that it makes it a lot easier for us to be able to find our parts when we need them, which cuts down on stress and of course, build time. One thing you'll notice is that there's a lot of colors here. And the reason for that is because the different colors show us different parts that are exactly the same. So for instance, the gun turrets here that are purple are all the same. If we see another gun turret that's not purple, that one is different. And that's important for this particular build when it comes down to detail. All right, R2, I think that pretty much sums up our instructions. I think it's time for us to dive right into the history of the USS Arizona. The USS Arizona was a Pennsylvania-class battleship built by the United States Navy in the mid-1910s. The ship was the second super dreadnought battleship to be built, but was also the last. The keel of the battleship, number 39, was laid on the morning of March 16, 1914. The builders actually wanted to set a world record to build the ship in 10 months, between the ship's keel laying and launch, but the ship was only a little over half complete a year later. The Arizona was launched on June 19, 1915, making it about 15 months from keel laying to launch. New York Times go on to declare that the Arizona was the biggest and most powerful, both offensively and defensively, super dreadnought ever constructed, and the ship would get its name after the newest state in the Union. The New York Times estimated that about 75,000 people attended the launch and several other warships stood nearby, including many of the new dreadnoughts which had already entered service. To acknowledge a ban on alcohol recently passed in the state, the governor decided to use two different bottles when it came to christening the ship, one full of sparkling wine from Ohio and the other filled with water from the Roosevelt Dam. A lot of people viewed this as bad luck. Although commissioned in 1916, the ship would remain stateside during World War I, seeing little to no action. After World War I though, things got a little bit busier. The Arizona was one of a number of American ships that briefly escorted President Woodrow Wilson to the Paris Peace Conference and also Turkey in 1919, at the beginning of the Turkish War to represent the American interests. Between 1929 and 31, the USS Arizona would receive an upgrade to bring it into the modern era. And good thing too, because this ship got a little bit busy over the next couple of years, especially when an earthquake struck Long Beach, California on March 10th, 1933. The Arizona crew provided aid to the survivors in this area. And in July, 1934, the ship was featured in a Jimmy Cajun film, Here Comes the Navy, about the romantic troubles of a sailor. In April, 1940, the Arizona and the rest of the Pacific fleet were transferred from California to Pearl Harbor, Hawaii as a deterrent to the Japanese. The Arizona would be overhauled one more time between October 1940 and January 1941. A few things were done during this refit, like her anti-aircraft armament was increased to 12 5-inch guns. The foundation of the search radar was also added. Her anti-aircraft detectors were upgraded and a platform for four water-cooled 50-inch 12.7mm caliber M2 Browning machine guns was installed at the very top of her main mast. Needless to say, the Arizona was ready to go. The last flag change of command occurred on January 23, 1941, when Captain Harold C. Train assumed command of the ship on the 3rd of February. 
Shortly before 0800 on December 7, 1941, Japanese aircrafts from six different aircraft carriers struck the Pacific Fleet at Pearl Harbor. On board the Arizona, the ship's air raid alarm went off at about 0755, but shortly after 0800, 10 Kate torpedo bombers attacked the Arizona. All of the aircraft were carrying 406 millimeter armor-piercing shells modified into 797 kilogram bombs, flying at an estimated altitude of 3,000 meters. The last bomb hit at 0806 in the vicinity of turret number two, likely penetrating the armored deck near the ammunition magazines located in the forward section of the ship. Its effects are indisputable. About seven seconds after the hit, the forward magazine detonated in a catastrophic explosion, and at the end of that long, tragic day, 1,177 officers and crewmen were lost. The wreckage of the USS Arizona still lies at the bottom of Pearl Harbor, with a memorial being dedicated on the 30th of May 1962 being built over top. It straddles the hull of the ship so that visitors can walk over top of the wreckage and witness firsthand a very important part of our history. Welcome back everybody. We did it. We built the USS Arizona and this build was a lot more work than I was originally expecting but man this looks great. Let's talk about it a little bit more in construction. My first point when it comes to building the USS Arizona from Metal Earth is that there are a lot of parts here to cut out, shape, and form. And if you're new to Metal Earth model building, this might be a little bit too much for you to start out with. I'm not saying it's impossible, but all the small detail along the board here can be very difficult to put together the first time. So Groovers, if you're checking this out for your first model, I would maybe look somewhere else to start. My second point when it comes to building is that this ship is actually divided into a few different sections while you're building, which is really easy to follow along with the instructions, but one thing you'll notice as you're adding on bits of detail, especially with the mast here, it's very easy to accidentally bend some of the pieces. And if you bend, well, it kind of looks a little weird at the end, so you have to go back and try to form them back in the right direction. This can be a little bit tricky, and I definitely recommend getting a good set of needle nose pliers to help you straighten out the mass and some of the other parts that might get bent during construction. Also, try to be very careful when putting everything together that you're not smushing any of the parts that you've already put onto the ship. I definitely had a little bit of a hard time putting on this mass over here, and it's not as straight as I would have liked it. My third and final point when it comes to building the Arizona is I made a little bit of a modification at the end by adding the magnets along the bottom. And I've been doing that with a few of my other metal models, and I've really liked how they've turned out. But with this particular ship, one thing I'm noticing is that, well, as I go to put the stand on the bottom, it doesn't necessarily want to go where I want it to go. And that's because it wants to attract as much metal as possible. And these little stands don't really have that much metal on the top. So yes, I can of course make this where it will sit and look nice on my desk and in my display case, but this particular modification I wouldn't necessarily recommend you doing at home, just because it can be a little bit finicky. With that being said, Groove Builders, let's move on to build time. The Arizona took me just over four and a half hours to build, and I spent a lot of my time going over the detail along the top here to make sure I kind of like the way that it looked. It is a little bit complicated to make sure that everything is straight on the Arizona, and I think a lot of people out there are going to be spending a lot of time doing what I did with the detail. But Groovers, remember, it's never a race to get these builds done. Once you're done, you're done. So you really want to enjoy the time that you're making these and also try to make them as straight and as pristine as possible. And finally, Groove Builders, my thoughts. The USS Arizona from Metal Earth completely surprised me. Yes, it's only two sheets, but the amount of parts that are there and all the little bits of detail that you have to form really made this metal model unique. And if I was to recommend this to somebody out there, I would try to recommend it to someone who's had a little bit of experience with other metal models, just because of all the required bends that you need to be able to do for this build. I mean, I've been building metal models now for almost two and a half years, and all the metal models that I've built, this one really challenged me to get everything the way I liked it. 
but I really like that. So that's why I'm recommending this particular build for novice builders and up, and not necessarily for the beginners out there. On a side note, group builders, I really do enjoy being able to look up the history on these models and sharing their stories with you, especially with the USS Arizona. There's just so much online and so many documentaries out there that I was able to look up and watch for my research. And Groovers, I'm gonna include some of those in my description down below if you're interested in learning a little bit more about this battleship and its place in our history. With that being said, group builders, we're at the end of our show. I had a really good time building the USS Arizona from Metal Earth with you, and if you guys had a good time, don't forget to press that like button. For more videos like this, hit subscribe as well as we got all kinds of really cool content coming out in the future. Until next time, group builders, keep building. Okay, now this one is definitely going on the desk. Hmm.